were supposed to go outside and have an obstacle course, but because of the rain, we had an inside obstacle course, and I went through that obstacle course, and I survived. So <laughs> it was called the obstacle course of life, and there are many different challenges in life, and there are many different challenges in that obstacle course, and I conquered it. So <laughs> praise the Lord, I'm still alive today. Amen. At this time, Brother Sam... Brother Tristan and Sister Ari are going to come. I'd like you to stand. We're going to do the pledge to the Bible first, and then we're going to do the pledge to the Christian flag, and then we're going to do the Pledge of Allegiance today. So Brother Sam's going to start us with the Bible today. You have your Bibles? You want to hold it up today? And the words will be on the screen for you if you don't know it. I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word. I will make it a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path, and will hide its word in my heart that I might not sin against God. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior for whose kingdom it stands. One Savior crucified, risen, and coming again with life and liberty to all who believe. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Praise God. Amen. We ought to give the Lord a hand clap for our freedom that we have today. Amen. Come on. Hallelujah. How many knows today freedom wasn't free? Thank God for those who have laid down their lives, those who have left their families to sacrifice, to go to fight in other countries, to fight abroad. And we thank them today for their sacrifices. But most of all, we thank our Lord and Savior for sacrificing His life that we could have spiritual freedom today. Amen? Amen. Praise God. I'm going to ask the choir to join us. Brother Nate's going to come to lead us to worship. Remain standing. And we're going to open in prayer. I should have done that a few minutes ago. I apologize. I'm kind of ner uh, mixed up this morning. So let's pray. Father, we thank you. Lord, we praise you for this opportunity and this freedom that we have to worship you. We thank you, Lord, for the choice and the ability to choose God, the God that we serve today. And God, I'm glad today that I serve a living God. And I thank you this morning for this time and opportunity that we have to sing and to lift our voices, lift our hands, and to worship you, Lord, as how we dictate it in our hearts today. Father, we ask that you would have your way here today. We ask it in the name of Jesus. And everybody shout amen today. Amen. How about praise the Lord one more time? Amen. We do indeed have much to be thankful for. Many of you have been through some stuff. Yes. And I hope that you thank God every day for bringing you through that stuff. Amen. He didn't have to do it, but I thank God he did. Yes. Just think back of what God has done for you even maybe it's this past week yes, Lord. situations that you were in Ooh. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. and you didn't know if you were going to get through it or not but you had sense enough to ask God and he brought you through it don't ever take him for granted 
food on the table, clothes on your back, a roof over your head, a transportation, a job, whatever it is. It wasn't luck. I don't believe in that stuff. I believe that he's in control. Amen. This first song, I don't know why I'm all emotional this morning. <laughs> It was a wonderful week of VBS. We taught the kids how to praise the Lord. I don't believe you're too young to learn how to praise the Lord. We know in the Bible, he said, suffer the children to come unto me. And we can sometimes take a cue from the kids. This first song is, let's just praise the Lord. We forget about ourselves, forget about what's going on. And let's just praise the Lord. So let's worship him this morning, church. This song is, Let's Just Praise the Lord. He's worthy. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, amen. Let's just praise the Lord. again this morning church he's going to get his praise whether we praise him or not he said the rocks would cry out God that we praise, He has everything that you need. This song is Jesus on the main line. If you don't know Him this morning, listen to these words. Listen to what God can do for you.
this morning, church. He said, whether there will be two or three gathered together in his name, he'd be in the midst. He's holy. He's awesome. He is worthy to be praised. I, I don't know. I just can't imagine. I'm, you know, we, I, I'm old, and I like to talk about the old time stuff, but there's no reason why that can't be today. I remember people used to bust the church doors down, couldn't wait to get to church. And thank God for what he did for him. Hallelujah. Amen. Now it seems like we want to be all prim and proper. Yeah. We don't want to say anything. I, I, I am not emotional, you know. Bless the Lord. We, we do all that stuff. Those same folks. Those same folks will get in front of the TV set. And when... Peyton Manning throws a touchdown, they're screaming and hollering and jumping around, and I'm thinking, okay, if you can get emotional about that, why not praise God for all that he's done for you? And I'm pointing, I'm pointing fingers at myself because I used to do that too. So I finally realized that God is the way, He's the answer. There's nobody else I need to be leaning on and depending on. Amen. Amen. Before we get prayer, before we have prayer requests, we want to sing this song, God is real. God is real. He's not some fictitious person that we talk to and, and do things with. He's real. Sing this song this morning, church. He's awesome. Sing this song this morning. Let's worship, church. There are some things I may not know. There are some places I cannot go. But I am sure, my God, 
that verse, sing that chorus again. He's real in my soul. Amen. 
the Lord a hand clap of praise. been said one of the biggest tricks the devil has performed is convincing man that God doesn't exist. Well, this song says you can't make me doubt him. Hallelujah. I know That's right. too much about him. You can't make me doubt him. You can't make me doubt him. You can't make me doubt him in my heart. Oh, you can't make me doubt him. I know too much about you. You can't make me down in my heart. You can't make me down here. You can't make me down here. You can't make me down in my heart. Oh, you can't make me down here. I know too much about you. You can't make me down in my heart. I've got the love of Jesus. I've got the love of Jesus. No. 
Brother Skid's going to bring forth the special this morning, so may God bless him as he ministers to us. Thank you, Lord. Also happy to have our former bishop and his wife with us this morning. Always have to say hello to them. Amen. Praise God this morning. Praise his wonderful name. You know, as this 4th of July approaches, I want to... Thank each and every vet here, glory, hallelujah, because I don't think I'd be standing here without them. They put their life on the line, and I want to thank them for that, glory. And I want to thank Jesus Christ who liberated me from a life of sin. And I'm glad of that. I'm glad that he gave his life for me, Lord. praise God. Yeah. we got a lot to be thankful for this morning, saints. we got a lot. Praise his name. I'm walking on Oh. 
Praise the Lord. Oh, come on. Praise the Lord. See, I've been around a bunch of kids all week. Praise the Lord. That's right. We had a good time around here this week, and I'm excited what the Lord's done and what He's going to do. Amen. If you have your Bibles this morning, I'd like you to turn to Philippians chapter 4, and we're going to read verse number 4. Now, I feel important up here amongst these flags. I didn't set it up like that. I can't see around them, but I just kind of feel important up here. <laughs> we'll put them back tonight, so don't worry. <laughs> so my head don't get big. Philippians chapter 4, verse number 4. Don't get quiet on me now. Okay. Praise the Lord. Okay. Philippians chapter 4, verse number 4. If you found that, say amen. If you didn't find it, it'll be on the screen for you. Or I'll wait just a second. Pretty simple scripture. I'm sure you've read it, heard it before. This is what I feel the Lord's laid on my heart today. Philippians 4 and 4 says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. This morning, the title of my message is Celebrate Jesus. Celebrate Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Let's pray. Lord, I love you. Lord, I thank you for the freedom and the liberty, Lord, that I have to worship you. Father, I pray this morning for that fresh anointing of the Holy Ghost. Father, anoint me and use me, Father, for the next few minutes. Help me to step aside, God, and let the Holy Ghost speak. God, for the next moment, few moments, Father. I pray, God, that you'd anoint me from the top of my head down to the soles of my feet. God, let me stand in that anointing today. Father, help me to preach under the unction of the Holy Ghost this morning. Father, anoint every ear to hear it and every heart to receive it. I pray right now in the name of Jesus. Everybody say, praise the Lord again. Praise the Lord. All right. Praise God. How many knows on Tuesday we're going to be celebrating Independence Day? Amen. Tuesday we're going to be celebrating Independence Day. And I looked up what, the, what, they, what Wikipedia said about Independence Day. It says, also referred to as the 4th of July. It's a federal holiday in the United States. I know the word. I just can't get it out. Commemorating. I'm not speaking in tongues. I'm trying to enunciate. <laughs> See, I've been around kids. I've acted silly. <laughs> the United States Kim, Kim, commemor I'm not going to... The adoption of the de Declaration of Independence 241 years ago on July the 4th, 1776. The Continental Congress declared the 13 colonies regarded themselves as a new nation. The United States of America was no longer part of the British Empire. Independence Day is commonly associated with fireworks, parades, barbecues, carnivals, fairs, picnics, concerts, baseball games, family reunions, and all kinds of different celebrations. That's what 4th of July, Independence Day. A lot of celebration going on this week. And I believe this morning, how many knows we ought to celebrate Jesus every day? But as we get ready to celebrate 4th of July and celebrate the freedom of the United States of America, uh, as we light off the fireworks, as we cook out on the grill and we relax a little bit and we celebrate the freedom that we have, let us remember that we have a spiritual freedom, amen, that's even greater than the natural freedom that we have, amen. Hallelujah. Go ahead and give him a hand clap of praise. If you're saved this morning, how many knows you ought to be free? The Bible says, whom the Son has set free is free indeed. Amen? Just as the United States of America declared 
their freedom from Britain's rule? How many knows the night when you knelt at an altar and you accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, you declared to the devil, I'm no longer bound by your chains. I am free from the sin and the bondage that you have tried to put upon my life. Amen. How many know sin should not be ruling a Christian's life? A sin should not be ruling a Christian's life. Does that mean we're never tempted? Does that mean we're never going to have to encounter a, a sin around us? No. What that means is sin don't dictate what I do. My spirit man now rules my flesh man. Amen. Because I've been liberated from the bondage that Satan had on me. Amen. When Satan had control, amen, I walked after the flesh. I did the things that were sinful. I did the things to please the flesh. I did the things to, 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 to please my inner man. But now Christ has came in and I've declared my freedom from sin and Christ has broke the chain of, of sin from my life and Christ has begun to change my nature. He's changed my nature. See, I don't have that sin man no more. Well, yeah, I do. He still rises up. But what I'm saying is sin don't rule my life any longer. And I don't desire to do things that are sinful because I don't want to hurt Jesus. Amen? But on October the seventh, I mean, in October 1987, on 11th and Elizabeth Street, Amen. I, I walked from the back, very forest part of the church down to the altar, right over here. I can remember it just like it was yesterday. I was sitting as far away as from the preachers I could get. I didn't want nothing to do with church. I didn't want nothing to do with the preacher. But I'll never forget Don Warden, the old gray-haired preacher, walking to the back of the church with tears running down his face. He came and said, Do you want to come and know Jesus? I couldn't hold it any longer. I got up from the very back. I walked down to the front. I knelt down on my knees and I declared my independence from the devil and said, Today I will be free from your bondage. I'm leaving it at the altar, and I've been set free. No longer does sin rule my life. That's 28 years ago. Does that mean I've never been tempted in 28 years? No. But I haven't allowed sin to rule and dictate my life any longer. Amen? I've been set free. I've been, I've been I declared my independence from the bondage of of sin. Why? Because I made a choice and a decision and because I became a good person? No. Because I accepted the fact that I was a sinner, I was going to die and go to hell without God, and I needed to repent of my sins, and I said, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. Will you save me? He broke the chains of bondage of sin from my life. I couldn't do it for myself. I couldn't get good enough to break those bonds. Only when I got on my knees and said, Lord, I'm a sinner, I need your forgiveness. Then I stood up free from the bondage and the chains of sin that Satan had on my life. And if you're a Christian today, how many know sin should not be ruling your life? Jesus Christ should be ruling your life. Amen. Just as the United States of America declared their independence from Great Britain's rule, amen, how many knows we need to stand up to the devil today and we need to tell the devil, you're no longer dictating and ruling my life. I have surrendered my life to Christ. Now, does that mean he's going to quit bothering you? Does that mean you're going to have to quit being tempted? No. But we need to take a stand and we need to defend our borders. Just like the United States of America defends their borders. And we protect the land that we love. And we protect, amen, the freedoms that we have. Amen. We need to do the same thing with ourselves. Amen. We enjoy our freedom. We enjoy saying my sins have been forgiven. But we must protect the borders around our lives. Amen. Don't allow things in your life that cause you to do things that you know are displeasing to God. Don't sit and watch things that are sinful and displeasing to God. Don't allow bad influences to come into your life. Amen. Enjoy the freedom that Christ has given you and guard your borders. 
Protect your mind. Protect your eyes. Protect your heart. Amen. Defend the freedom that you have. Don't just lay down and let the devil run over you. Amen? Freedom wasn't free. Men laid down their lives. Amen? That we could come here today and worship God the way that we choose to worship God. Jesus Christ laid down His life. Amen? That I could stand here today and declare unto you, I've been freed from the bondage of sin. I've been freed from the bondage and the chains of sin that used to bind my life. Not because I became a good person, because Christ died, bled, shed His blood, rose again, amen, and He forgave me of my sins, and He broke that bondage that Satan had on my life. I don't know about you, but I don't want to be bound up anymore. Huh? I enjoy Jesus. And that's why the title of my message is Celebrate Jesus. Hmm? We're getting ready to cook out. We're getting ready to light off fireworks. We're getting ready to take a day off work, some of you. And we're going to celebrate the freedom of the United States of America. But how many knows as children of God, we ought to celebrate every day, amen, that we have been broke from the bondage of sin that used to rule and dictate our lives. If you're sad and depressed, you're saved. Amen, that I challenge you to get to the altar because of Jesus I serve. He's exciting. Amen, He's happy. He's joyous. Yeah, I got problems. We all got problems. But you know what? The Bible says rejoice in the Lord always. How many knows in the midst of problems, in the midst of troubles, how many knows we can still rejoice because we know that sin doesn't rule our lives and that our hearts are right with God? Satan can attack and destroy this body, but how many knows he can't steal your salvation? You've got to lay it down. Huh? He can't cross the blood. The devil can't cross the blood. Amen. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Celebrate Jesus. Celebrate the fact I've been liberated. I'm free. Amen. The bondage that I used to have don't buy my life no more. Addictions don't hold me any longer. The chain of addiction has been broken. I'm free. And I want to celebrate Jesus. Drug and alcohol counseling didn't do it, Brother Nate. Mom and Dad sent me there. It didn't work. My counselors at school couldn't figure it out, and they couldn't fix me because I was broken on the inside. I was bound by addiction. I was bound by the chains of sin. But today I've been liberated. I'm free. I'm a new man in Jesus. And I'll celebrate till the day I die. Amen. I used to get pumped up and excited about Friday nights, going out drinking and partying and getting high, getting drunk. But I get excited about coming into the presence of God and worshiping Him. Can I tell you, it feels a whole lot better. Amen. You feel good when you get high and you get drunk. Don't let me get you wrong. But how many knows that's a second rate, it's a counterfeit for what God has. Amen. Feels so much better. To come into the house of God and feel the Holy Ghost chill bumps. Some of them call it goosebumps. Some call it Holy Ghost goosebumps, whatever you want to call them. When the presence of God begins to sweep around your soul and you begin to feel the presence of God, it feels so much better than any high or any drunk this world has to offer. How many knows we got the real thing? Amen. We got the real deal inside of us. Amen. If Christ abides in you, amen, you need to celebrate today. I'm free. I'm free. I'm free. Don't sit there and act like you ain't never sinned before. The Bible says we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. We were all sinners. Amen. You can't save yourself. Only Christ can save you. Let's celebrate Jesus. Let's celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. We're free because He died and He rose again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm free because He bled for me. Hallelujah.
rejoice in the Lord. Hallelujah. Rejoice in your freedom. Hallelujah. I'm free. I'm free. I'm free. Hallelujah. You may say, well, you don't know what kind of week I had. You don't know what you have. You don't know what I've been through, preacher. If you're saved, you still got a reason to rejoice. Yeah, we're going to have bad weeks. Yeah, things are going to happen. Yeah, the devil's going to rip and roar. Amen. But if you're still saved, you've got a reason to lift your head up and say, I'm a child of God. I will not be defeated. Hallelujah. Celebrate Jesus. Rejoice in the Lord. Amen. Rejoice in what the Lord has done. We sing that song, Look What the Lord Has Done. Not look what Chris has done. Not look what Sister Penny's done. Not what Brother Nate's done. Look what the Lord has done. He's changed us. He's freed us. I don't know. Amen. He broke the bondage. Amen. Look what the Lord has done. Let us rejoice in what the Lord has done in our lives. You may say, well, uh, I wasn't that bad. I mean, knows there is no big sin and little sin in God's eyes. We're all sinners, saved by the grace and mercy of Almighty God. Huh? I never. I don't care. You still had to be free from the bondage of sin, just like everybody else did. You still had to go to the altar, just like I did. Huh? We all had to find an altar somewhere. At some time, amen, we were all bound by the same chain. We all may have had different uh, problems. We may all had different things that we had to be free from. Amen, but when God looks down, all He sees is a sinner that needs the chain of sin broken. He don't care if you're a drunk or you're a liar. Amen, we're still sinners in the eyes of God. So if you want to sit back and say, I have nothing to rejoice about, you sit back. I will stand here and I'll rejoice. I'll celebrate Jesus. Amen. I'll celebrate what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. Amen. The devil gets on your shoulder. You tell him, look what the Lord has done. He saved my soul. Amen. You can take this body. Amen. But how many knows he can't take your soul? Amen. Look what the Lord has done. Rejoice in what the Lord has done. Then I like what the Scripture says. In the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord. So you can't rejoice if you're not in the Lord. You don't know what I'm talking about if you're not in the Lord. You can know about God. You can be brought up in a home. They prayed every, over every meal. They prayed every night. And they talked about God. They read their Bibles. But if you've never come to an altar and never accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're not in the Lord, and you can't rejoice like what I'm talking about here today. But you can leave here and rejoice the same way I'm. You may not want to rejoice like me. You may think I'm half stupid and crazy. I don't care. When I got drunk, I got high, I yelled and screamed and did stupid stuff. Amen. I'll yell and scream for Jesus and I'll do stupid stuff if I have to. Amen. Because I'm going to celebrate what I got. I got joy unspeakable and full of glory. I got peace. Amen. That flows in my life that it never had flown until Christ has came in. But you got to be in the Lord to be able to rejoice. It's Christ that brings the joy. It's Christ that brings the completeness. It's Christ